We're going to talk about Kamala Harris. Yay! Yippee! <laughs> I'm going to give the first word to Katie on this one because she did talk to me about it in the DMs and hoping that this would be a conversation we did have. So you guys give a big shout out to Katie for that. And yeah, please take it away. Um, well, I just, I wanted to discuss how Kamala Harris is being discussed in the press and uh, by pundits and on social media. Um, we all knew that the establishment Democratic Party would have their chosen one candidate. Um, we kind of cycled through a bunch of potentials and apparently uh, right now they've settled on Kamala Harris. And the thing that I have a problem with is not that they've chosen their candidate, their potential nominee for 2020. It's not that there's buzz or, or even the, the fluff pieces, that these insepid fluff pieces written about how great she is. The problem that I'm having is that anyone uh, who questions her from the left, who questions her background, her stance on the prison industry, the war on drugs, uh, many, many other things, um, get called racist and sexist. It's like they're using people of color as a shield to deflect any uh, substantial conversation and questions around policy issues. And uh, so I just wanted to throw it out there to discuss with all you. I wanted to get your points of view on it um, because it's it's troubling me a lot that this is the direction that they've chosen to go this early on. Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead. John, what do you think uh, on that? I don't want to, because I've got a lot of thoughts on this. So I want to make sure everyone else has a chance to talk before I go ahead and pull a Brandon. It, it's happened to me numerous times, and it's even happened to me from fellow leftists, where like I will criticize the fact that they're using her identity as a shield for her policy, and I will be called out for that. And while you all know I'm indelicate, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm coming from a position of you know harboring any type of deep-seated racism. I mean, we've talked before, uh, you know, based on my background, there's going to be problems with any way I see race just because of where I grew up, how I grew up, but I've worked my entire life to try and address that and to try and change. But at the same time, it wasn't from, you know, the typical Trump supporter racism. It was more along the lines of a, a typical lib racism. And so for me, it's really problematic when I say, hey, Kamala Harris failed to prosecute One West and then its owner fronted her at events for her Senate run and donated to her campaign and put her in touch with every mega donor that he had, as well as, you know, the only time that Munchen has ever donated to a Democrat was to Camilla Harris. And then on top of that, her talk on prison reform and prisoner labor. And then on top of that, her talk about trans rights. She's very pro problematic for a progressive. And her economic policies are, at this point, as far as I can tell, non-existent other than means tech. The only thing that I've seen that even ties into where I am on economics is her talking about free college tuition, and she's even talked about means testing that. And so all of a sudden, I'm talking about these policies that she backs and these, these actions that she's taken in the past, and I'm called out for being a Bernie bro white racist. And it's like, um, I didn't say anything other than policy. Uh, I, I don't know her. I don't know who she is. All I know is the things she's done and the policies she's pushed. So how is it racist that I don't like her when mm, I've been pushing for Nina Turner to run for president for 2020? And on top of that, it's like then I'm in that backed into that position of saying, well, I back Nina Turner. And it's like, well, I've capitulated to the identity argument on their terms. So I don't know, necessarily know how to address this. It's really pissed me off in numerous times in numerous conversations because I feel like the argument is not being had on the, my terms or the terms that the left really wants. It's being had on the terms that the neoliberals want, and I don't know how to change that. And the whole point is to stifle the conversation. I'm seeing a lot of uh, social media posts and even articles in uh, major media outlets that are grouping together Kamala Harris with Cory Booker, with Deval Patrick. Um, I've even seen uh, them group Joy Reid, Neera Tandon, Anyone, any person of color, uh, specifically woman of color, no matter who they are, no matter what their background is, no matter what their profession, whether they're elected official or not, all of a sudden gets grouped in with Kamala Harris uh, for one reason and one reason only because they are a woman or person of color. And then they use those groupings of people to then say, oh, well, look at all these women of color that Bernie bros don't like. That's because they're racists and they're sexists. And it just shuts down the conversation before it begins. Um, it, it's it's just incredibly troubling. And uh, I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
No, I, I, I personally agree with you, Richard, before I go on it, because again, I'm going to pull a serious Brennan here and probably talk for a good 15 minutes. I just want to make sure that you get your thoughts in real quick, because I don't know if I have much time at the end of, after that's over. So. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I paid attention to Kamala Harris as she was coming up uh, when she was uh, still a prosecutor and uh, was starting to run and I, I, I looked at her as uh, when I was it was when I was becoming more politically active and stuff and thinking about how can I reach out how can I help people how can I be more engaged in this process and so you know running she was uh, running for higher office and so or senator or for senate and so I was like you know what do I think about her and I started to look into it and I was like wow this this is the best option that they have for the left in that area, but I don't, uh, this is before the whole Hillary thing and before all of that, so like, I hadn't really had my, my come to realization moment with uh, what the liberal left and versus the far left or what, uh, the leftists and so on and so forth. I hadn't quite understood what that meant within the Democratic Party in the context of uh, our political atmosphere today. And so, I, I was always going to have a problem with her like before like I had a problem with her when she was running for, to be in California Senate and I don't even live in California so like my issues go along be, like ha don't have anything to do with Hillary or anything it has to do with exactly what John was pointing out the policy things that she was doing and what she was representing as a prosecutor and, and the type of well just the that fact that she was a prosecutor what kind of progressive is a prosecutor yeah I mean that exactly that's a red flag for me right away like I just uh, just because of how I understand our legal system and how uh, from what I've gathered from it it's hard for me to reconcile uh, a moral a moral existence and being a prosecutor just because of how our system works not just on the the concept of that you know trying people for law or violations of law but the way our system works it's hard for me to reconcile being moral and being a prosecutor i know some people are able to do it and and for them that we we're safer sometimes but they screw up a lot and that that, that would weigh heavy on my conscience and they seem to be able to sleep well despite that <laughs> so i uh, so i did my little rant you can go ahead and dare and get, get <laughs> <run out>. so, <laughs> first and foremost I, before i actually get into some of my own thoughts i'm going to answer a few questions that we got in uh, the YouTube live chat. So Nuke says 2020 is a long way away. They should be focused on winning the midterms. You're right. They should be focused on the midterms. But what the fuck do the Democrats actually give a shit about winning for? That, like, that idea of saying they should focus on the, 2020, on the 2018 midterms is basically like me saying, hey, I know I should focus on my homework, but fuck that. I'm going to go get shit faced at the bar instead. Why? Because I goddamn can. That's what the Democrats do. That's how they view the world. So that's why they're not focusing on the midterms. There's your answer to that question. Yeah. Mm. If Russia's not running against somebody in the midterms, then the, the, they're not paying any attention to it. Yep. And <laughs> yeah. I think we lost Katie, by the way. Yeah. I do, too. It's unfortunate she pops back. We would love to have her. If not, she's absolutely amazing. We really do appreciate her coming on. We will try to book her again next week, So, I'm hoping that there's no technical difficulties. Continue on to another question. Denny, uh, and I'm probably going to pronounce your last name wrong, Dimochka. I mean, that didn't work for Hillary. Why are their strategists thinking this will work for them? And talking about um, Kamala Harris, because she has the same strategists. They're the same people. They don't change. They don't fire anybody. It's the same goddamn people over and over and over. Asking the Dems to learn something is, I don't, it's impossible. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. The sooner we recognize this, the sooner we stop giving them any money, the sooner we stop giving them any goddamn airtime is a great goddamn day as far as I'm concerned. It's the day we take a fucking step forward. But that's beside the goddamn point. Wait, to add <laughs> to that, point? to add to that, Zuckerberg <laughs> just hired Joel Benison from the failed 2008 campaign. Like, what uh, the fuck? Uh, and so, the, and the last one I'm going to go with tonight is unspoken voice inside me. And this is before I just go into my own thing. These are just things I saw that I wanted to address. Unspoken, unspoken voice uh, inside media said, Kamala is a Clinton front. White people need to just go after her on the policy and laws. They only reflect same neocon government with the elites as the pecking order. That's what we're doing. And I mean, I mean that just as the left, not just white people, but the left is attacking her on her position, on her stances, on her, the fact that she's a neoliberal piece of shit. They're garbage. They're running this entire country to the ground. But guess what? When people are using the fact, when, when people are weaponizing identity, and it's not just that Kamala Harris is doing this, it's that the American left does this. American left is the gatekeeper. They play gatekeeper identity politics. 
they say, well, guess what? You can't actually dislike her because of her policies, which are absolutely shit, right? Her policies are shit. Don't get me wrong. But they say, no, you can't possibly not like her because of that. You have to not like her because she's black. No, I can hate her because she's got shit policies. That's a fact of the matter. Just because your head's so far up your goddamn ass that you can't see the fucking reason doesn't mean the rest of us can't. She is garbage. She's garbage. She's trash. She's the same thing. And again, she's Clinton. She's Clinton. She's just goddamn brown. And being brown doesn't make her a fucking superhero. It makes her a shitty brown person. That's it. That's all. That's all there is to it. You cannot sit up here and tell me, oh, yeah, I'm a prosecutor. I'm going to send innocent black people to jail in this unjust war on drugs, among other things. And then sit up here and tell me you're a goddamn liberal. Shut the hell up. Shut no, up. No, she can tell you she's a liberal, not a progressive. No, she can't. She can't say she's a goddamn liberal. You're not liberal. The war on drugs is not a liberal position. Period. Nobody. And, 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 and let's just move a little bit further. The fact that the simple fact of the matter, she's going to be a shitty candidate no matter what her politics are, because she's a goddamn capitalist. End of fucking story. When you vote for capitalists, you're voting against your own self-interest. So I'm sorry. Stop trying to shove these people down my damn throat, DNC, because I'm not going to goddamn vote for them. In fact, I'm going to do everything I can to work against them. This whole idea of, oh, my God, I get to decide what identity politics means. I get to decide what blackness is. You don't get to weaponize my own identity against me because I'm telling you your, your politics are shit and they hurt black people. Your politics are shit and they hurt poor white people. Your politics are shit and they hurt the global south. Your politics are shit and they hurt everybody who's not rich and white. That's where your policies goddamn hurt. But no, it came from a black woman. So I must be a goddamn racist, right? I must have some serious internalized racism because I don't have, I happen to not like a black woman. Let me go ahead and tell you real quick what that is, white liberals out there, who continue to feel like this is, this is a good line of reasoning. That's racism right there. Well, you're black and she's black, so you two must go together. No, that's not how it works. We're not a homogenous block. She's a piece of shit and she will always be a piece of shit so long as she's a capitalist and has the same goddamn policies. Fuck that shit. End of story. Now, tell us how you really feel, though. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think, honestly, that was your best goddamn rant that I've ever heard. Thank you.